Welcome to the Retirement Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Greg Gonzalez. My goal for the podcast is to help you live a better life in retirement by giving you the tools and information you need in a language that you can understand. The hardest part about my job, for those that know me, I'm a financial planner or retirement planner in St. Louis, Missouri. We work with people 50 and older as they plan for a successful retirement. And the toughest part about my job is when I have to report to people that are on the verge of retirement and they've got their mindset, their heart set on a given retirement date. Let's say it's at the end of the year and they say, well, gosh, honey, we should probably meet with a financial advisor and get a plan set for our retirement to help us with the big choices that we have, such as Medicare and Social Security and what to do with our 401k and taxes. So as a retirement planner, I help people put together a retirement plan. And the hardest part about what I do, the toughest part, it just breaks my heart when I have to collect all that information get to know this nice couple that wants to retire in the near future. And I have to go back and report to them that, hey, in my opinion, in my professional opinion, I do not recommend that you retire now. Maybe you push off retirement based on the resources that you have, because I think it's ill-advised to retire at this point in time. And what might make it ill-advised to retire? What might make their retirement date unachievable? Well, simply for most people, it's that they either haven't saved enough to fund their retirement or, you know, the resources they have aren't adequate to supply or feed the lifestyle that they want in retirement. Maybe they have too much debt. There's a lot of different factors that go into that and factor into whether someone can retire successfully. But it's the worst part of what I do for a living. And I want to see people succeed. And if it means, hey, you got to work another year, or you got to get this debt paid off before you can retire, or you have to live on less than you were anticipating or originally desiring to make your retirement plan a success. Or maybe for some people, it's they're going to have to work a part-time job so they have a supplemental income in retirement. And some people are okay with that and others aren't. So I wanted to use this episode as kind of a a sounding board for those listeners out there who are in, maybe they're in their 50s or maybe 60s, and they're saying to themselves, well, what questions do I need to get figured out before I retire? And I've kind of come up with six main questions that you need to get answered before you pull the trigger on retirement. Now, I think these are six great questions to get figured out, but there may be more. I don't think it's an exhaustive list. I think you can even expand on this further. But if you can get these six questions figured out by the time you retire and you get that retirement plan built, I think you're going to be in great shape. So this episode, we're going to talk about those six questions that I recommend you figure out beforehand and don't wait until the day before you retire. Give it a few months or maybe even a year before you retire to get your retirement plan updated, get these questions all answered so you're comfortable, so you have a seamless transition into retirement. You want retirement to be a blessing, not a curse, and you want to make sure you have all your ducks in a row. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about that, the six questions to get answered before you retire. But before we do that, I want to remind listeners or maybe listeners who are are new to the podcast, this is a a weekly podcast called the Retirement Made Easy Podcast. We created this podcast to help listeners plan for those retirement decisions that they're all facing. So many people, and there's 77 million estimated, 77 million baby boomers in this country retiring at 10,000 a day. So retirement planning is very top of mind for many people. And every day as a retirement planner in St. Louis, I have these conversations with clients or people who are not yet clients and help them figure out these tough choices and decisions that they encounter as they're planning for a successful retirement. So the podcast is here as a sounding board to help you and be a resource, a free resource 
with no strings attached. And also we have a website that's dedicated where you can listen to previous episodes and you have a library of free resources that we make available for free at retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. Underneath the resources tab, you can find my retirement secret sauce, my couple's guide to a dream retirement, as well as our retirement budgeting tool. So if you're putting together a budget as you plan for retirement, how much money you want to spend every month, what your bills are, that tool is tremendous. So check out our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. At the bottom of the website, if you want to submit your questions, feel free. You can submit them. It'll say, ask Greg a question. I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear comments or suggestions for previous or for future episodes, that is. So let's jump into this episode and talk about the six questions to get answered before you retire. All right, question number one. This is a fantastic question and to think about, and it might be different for your spouse than it is for you, depending on how much you like your work and what you do, or maybe there's a profession or a part-time job that you want to find. So question number one is, Do you plan on working in retirement part-time? Maybe it's doing consulting work. And what about your spouse? Does he or she plan on working part-time or in some capacity in retirement? I have a lot of clients that end up being semi-retired, what we call semi-retired. Maybe their boss brings them back and maybe instead of working 40 or 50 hours a week, they're working 15 or 20 And maybe it's as a contract employee, maybe like 1099 or something like that, without benefits. I have other clients that find a new part-time job that just kind of keeps them busy, and maybe it's with a, a business or organization that they really like and they're passionate about. And why is this question so important? Well, number one, as a retirement planner, we kind of want to know, we kind of want to plan ahead hey, how much income are we expecting in your first year of retirement and in the first couple of years of retirement? So we kind of want to plan on, okay, should we plan on any part-time income or consulting work coming in or not at all? That might impact your social security claiming decision based on how much income you have coming in the door, right? From part-time work or something like that. Of course, if you're under full retirement age, which for most people is somewhere between 66 and 67, if you're under full retirement age and you claim your social security benefit, you're limited based on how much money you can actually earn in a year while collecting your social security. And once you reach that amount, then they start withholding funds from your social security check. So you wanna make sure that you plan ahead and know how much money you're gonna make part-time And maybe you hold off on claiming Social Security until you figure that out. And that leads me into question number two is, you should probably figure out your Social Security claiming strategy. Are you going to claim it right away the year in which you retire? Are you going to wait a couple years and let your Social Security benefit defer and grow so it's a larger amount in the future? What is the optimal age for you to claim your social security benefit so you're not leaving money on the table? And what about your spouse? Maybe it makes more sense for your spouse to claim earlier while your benefit can grow and defer so it's a larger amount in the future. Question number three probably should have been question number one, but question number three is you need to kind of do a budget and have an idea of how much you want to live on in retirement, right? So you have to know, okay, what are my expenses? What are my current monthly expenses? Do I have any expenses that are either going to go away once I retire or are going to increase or decrease when I retire? For example, maybe you're not yet 65 and eligible for Medicare, so maybe you'll be on COBRA or have some kind of health insurance that costs you a lot more in retirement than when you were working when you had the group Uh, health insurance coverage. And then once you turn 65 and you're eligible for Medicare, maybe that health insurance expense will go down, that health insurance premium. And what expenses might go up? Well, maybe you'll spend more money in retirement on your leisure activities. Maybe you'll go out to dinner more. 
maybe you will uh, travel more or spend more money on grandkids or family or hobbies. I know for myself, I spend the most money on Saturdays. And I just think about that. Saturdays and Sundays, I spend the most money of any day of the week. Well, guess what? In retirement, every day is a Saturday. So I find a lot of clients in their first year of retirement, they end up spending more than they were expecting because they're out and about and more active than they were when they were working Monday through Friday. So again, question number three, and we have a retirement budgeting tool on our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. It's under resources. You can get that for free right there. But coming up with your retirement budget, how much you're going to be spending every month is absolutely crucial. So you can kind of do the math with your financial planner and decide, is now a good time to retire? Can I afford to retire with my resources that I have available? My social security, my part-time income, my 401k, my Roth IRAs. Can that provide me enough income to take care of the monthly living expenses that I want in retirement? Now, many of you know that I'm a Dave Ramsey SmartVestor Pro, so I kind of follow his philosophies of, you know, hey, getting your debt paid off. And why is that so important to retirees? Well, if someone's debt-free and they're approaching retirement, their monthly budget is going to be less, their monthly expenses are going to be less than someone that has a mortgage and two car loans and all this other stuff because they're done making a bank or credit card company rich by the interest payments. They're debt free and they can live on less. So question number three is absolutely crucial. Put together, I recommend you figure out how much you want to spend in retirement based on your budget and your retirement goals that you and your spouse may have. And hopefully there's a surplus of income. So meaning you could spend up to, let's say, $7,000 a month, but you really only desire to live on $6,000 a month in retirement. That's a great thing. That means you can afford to retire tomorrow. All right, the next question is question number four. And health insurance and the cost of health insurance, in my experience, is the number one reason why people push off retirement because it's so darn expensive. And it only seems to be getting more and more expensive every year as we go along. So number question number four is, what are you going to do for health insurance in retirement? For those of you that are, let's say, have coverage through your your employer, you have health insurance covered through your employer and are 65 or older, you can just jump over to Medicare and you're immediately eligible and that will cover you. What about for all the people out there that maybe they're not 65 yet or their spouse isn't 65 yet? They're going to have a decision to make whether they're going to go with COBRA, if that's available to them and they're currently working. Maybe they're going to look at the healthcare exchange, also known as Obamacare, or maybe private health insurance. So I would get this figured out months before you ever retire so you have an idea of how much it's going to cost, what's the best coverage for you and your family. And also that's the cost is going to go into your monthly budget. So for many people, that health insurance in retirement is going to be one of their biggest expenses in retirement until they hit Medicare age. So you want to question number four, you want to figure out what you're going to do for health insurance in retirement. Question number five. Question number five, you want to figure out what debts that you have, if you still have debts outstanding, maybe it's a mortgage, a car loan, something like that, that you should get paid off by the time you retire. I tell you, if I had a nickel for every time somebody said to me, man, I'd love to have that mortgage paid off by the time I retire, I'd have a lot of nickels. For a lot of people, for whatever reason, that's a goal of theirs to be debt-free by the time they retire because they know, hey, my mortgage is my biggest monthly expense and to have that expense gone by the time I retire, that just means my monthly living expenses can be a lot lower. My grandfather used to say, and I quote, I don't want to owe anything to anybody. When he retired, he had two cars that were paid off, a house that was paid off, a farm that was paid off, his boat was paid off. Yeah, he didn't owe the bank a dime. So that's something to consider. If you have the ability 
to pay off your home by the time you retire, or maybe a car loan or something like that. Figure out what debts can you get paid off by the time you retire. And lastly, this is question number six, and this is probably the most important of the six, really, to some degree, because it it is more complicated, it is more complex. There's a lot that's going to go into this calculation, but you know, and this involves, you know, sitting down with a, a fiduciary financial planner and figuring out, okay, how long's your money projected to last based on the retirement lifestyle that you desire? Is it going to last until you're 80, you're 90, or would it last until you reach age 100? And on top of that, the other question that's kind of hand in hand with how long is your money projected to last, your retirement savings is what I mean by money, what rate of return do you need from your retirement nest egg? And I'm just going to call your retirement nest egg your investments that you have saved for retirement. Maybe that's an IRA. Maybe it's a 401k or a Roth IRA or mutual funds that you have in a brokerage account. Whatever those are, your retirement savings, retirement nest egg, what rate of return do you need from that portfolio, from those accounts for your retirement plan to be successful? And what I will tell you is the lower, the better. In other words, if we as a team did a retirement plan for somebody and we said, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, your retirement plan has a very high probability of success. In fact, For your retirement plan to be successful, you only need a return of 2% per year for the rest of your life. Just a meager 2% per year for your plan to be successful and you to accomplish your retirement dreams and goals. That would be a great result. That would be something that would give you so much comfort and confidence in your retirement and your decision to retire. On the flip side, if I helped with a retirement plan and I had to report back to Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and I said, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, by all my analysis, for your plan to be a success with the highest probability of success, your portfolio needs to have a 10% annual compounded return every year. That would be a very tall task. In fact, the probability of success for a retirement plan like that would be about 5 to 10%. So in that instance, it would probably make more sense for Mr. and Mrs. Smith to delay their retirement so they had more resources available or consider cutting their expectations of what they want to live on in retirement. Most people don't want to do that. So it's, it's best to probably push off your retirement and save more in the coming years. So I want to recap. Question number six is you want to make sure you know how long your money will last and what rate of return you need from your retirement accounts, from your retirement nest egg in order for your re- retirement plan to be a success. If you find out that, hey, your retirement accounts, your retirement nest egg only needs to grow by 2 or 3% a year for your retirement plan to be a success, congratulations. You are on your way to a great retirement. You have saved and invested wisely, and you've got a well-funded retirement plan. So those are the six questions I would make sure to get answered before you retire. Get all that figured out ahead of time. I will assure you and want to assure you, you'll be much more confident and comfortable when it comes time to retirement because getting those six questions answered will help prove to you that you're all set for retirement. I hope this episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast has been helpful. Check out our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. And remember, always dream big. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, please consult your attorney, 
tax advisor, or financial advisor prior to investing. This is a hypothetical example and is not representative of any specific investment. Your results may vary. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices mentioned are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. The Smart Vester program is a directory of investment professionals. Neither Dave Ramsey nor Smart Vester are affiliates of St. Louis Retirement Advisors or LPL Financial. There is no guarantee that a diversified portfolio will enhance overall returns or outperform a non-diversified portfolio. Diversification does not protect against market risk. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, Memra FINRA, SIPC. 